Hello and welcome. The continent of Australia has a massive coastline of 59,736 kilometres. Western Australia's coastline accounts for 20,781 kilometres of that. The length of Australia's coastline represents 51% of the Earth's circumference. Amazing. The ability of Australia's maritime and defence organisations to mount surveillance over such a distance is a challenge. No wonder that Australia is a world leader in high frequency sky wave over the horizon radar technology. This technology had its beginnings in early research into the ionosphere conducted at weapons research establishment from the 1950s. Subsequently, the Jinder Lee High Frequency Over the Horizon Radar became a core research project from 1970. Unlike traditional radars that were limited by the line of sight, the Jinder Lee High Frequency Radar used the ionosphere above the Earth's surface. A high frequency radio signal was beamed skywards from a transmitter and refracted down from the ionosphere to illuminate a target. The echo from the target travelled by a similar path back to a separate receiver site. Received data was processed into real-time tracking information. In 1971, John Strath advocated strongly and successfully for a funding for a scaled-up prototype. The story goes back to 1969 when I prepared a series of information papers for the Chief Defence Scientist uh, dealing with the problem of air defence of Northern Australia. An attempt had previously been made to mount such experiments and unfortunately these were unsuccessful and we had to demonstrate that there were good reasons why we should succeed where others had failed. The first experimental radar designed and built by Defence Science and Technology Group was constructed at Alice Springs in Central Australia in the mid-1970s. Jindalee A was modestly powered and had a narrow field of detection, a staring beam with a simple whip antenna array only one quarter of the length of the current Alice Springs Jindalee radar. Jindalee A did detect aircraft at long range and later ships. Its radar waveform generator was one of the few pieces of Australian developed original equipment retained in later Jinder Lee stages. In the early 1980s, Jinder Lee B, costing some $30 million, was developed. It was higher powered, covered at least 60 degrees, had radar track white scan capability and an advanced automatic frequency allocation system. In 1986, approval was given for the design and development of the Over the Horizon radar network. A network of these installations would be constructed covering the approaches of Northern Australia. That same year, the operational radar Jindalee C was handed over to the Royal Australian Air Force. The rugged demands of operational life had been allowed for by re-engineering by BAE Systems, formerly known as AWA. In 1991, the Commonwealth awarded Telstra a prime contract worth $860 million to design and construct the Jindalee Operational Radar Network. Telstra awarded major subcontracts to GEC Marconi and Telstar Systems, a joint venture between Telstra and Lockheed Martin Corporation. Phases 3 and 4 of the fully-fledged defence network were operationally released to the RAAF and formally accepted in 2003. By this time, the new capability consisted of two radars, Radar 1 located in Queensland and Radar 2 located in Western Australia. The original Jindalee radar at Alice Springs continued to be operated as a separate system by the RAAF. The network was Australia's first comprehensive land and air early warning system, providing a 24-hour military surveillance of the northern and western approaches to Australia, 
and serving a civilian purpose in assisting in detecting illegal entry, smuggling and unlicensed fishing. Illegal entry by non-citizens who arrive without visas to enter, smuggling of contraband and illegal fishing in Australian waters are ongoing off our northern coastline. Thank you for watching. If you have a comment, please add one below. Like and subscribe to promote content.